Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage four of Tour of Romandy, day five of racing here for the European Peloton. Today's stage is going to be a monster, the queen stage here at Tour of Romandy because there's five categorized climbs and you definitely want to pay attention to the last climb because it's going to summit 21 kilometers long, about seven and a half percent throughout the whole 21K. So it's going to be a mammoth stage for the racers here at Tour of Romandy. Now, when the racing starts, we all know Ayuso has the race leader's jersey and it's tight within the top 10, about 45 seconds through the top 10 on the general classification. But UAE team Emirates should have this under control, right? Ayuso has shown he is in magnificent form throughout the first few stages here at Tour of Romandy and put on a monster display in yesterday's individual time trial race when he crossed the line with just veins coming out of his neck and everything throwing the bike to the line with the bike throw to put himself in the race leader's yellow jersey and he's looked magnificent on all of the earlier mountainous stages but we haven't seen anything quite like today in the spanish rider well this is his first race back after an injury so we got to see what uae are capable of doing but don't worry you got adam yates in the top five he can look after a uso instead of monster pace going up this last climb that's what i'm thinking i mean dominique novak's a solid rider mikhail bjerg is definitely solid and then when you look at rafael micah finn fisher black uae team emirates are looking solid up here with six solid riders that can go up into the mountain stages here at tour of romandy so when the racing started i expected to see just attacks all over and see some magnificent racing early but after that i did, thought we would see basically a uae train going up the final climb well, hold on to your seats here and bat batten down the seat belts on the Chesterfield because this is going to be a big one. Now, when the cameras come on, it's 50K to go and the brakes, more than 10 riders, but blowing up when the cameras come on to the breakaway riders because there's only five riders left in the up the road. It's Ben Zwiwoff from Bora Hansgrohe, Joseph Cherney from Pseudo Quickstep. Remember, he's won a stage here already. Larson Craddock's there for Jaco Alula, his teammate Chris Yule Jensen, and then Thomas DeHent from Lotto Destiny around out the top five that have about a two-minute gap on the peloton. When the cameras come back to the peloton, lo and behold, I am surprised. It's FDJ on the front with four riders trying to bring back these five guys so that they have a shot at winning the stage. Now, it's 50 kilometers to go, remember, so I didn't get to see what happened in the first part of the stages, but I'm surprised it's FGJ on the front, but they do have solid riders, right? Remember, it's Pino that had a solid TT yesterday, so he's about a minute, minute, 10 down on the general classification, if I recall correctly, but they also have Lenny Martinez, which is the young French rider that can climb pretty solid and did a solid TT. So FDJ with their two last riders up there here at Tour of Romandy on stage four are drilling it. Now we go over the top, starts getting wet and slippery. If I take you all the way back to the beginning of the stage when they were signing on, it was miserable conditions and nobody looked happy. Now we're coming up the penultimate climb here and you see the peloton. They're about 155, 210 behind the breakaway up front. There's a little tack from Astana, but that's not gonna go anywhere as it gets pulled right back. UAE Team Emirates, Dominique Novak will start going up there with the FDJ riders and doing some controlling of the peloton as we're coming down the descent. Now, just as they finish the descent, it's a little messy, slippery, wet out there. The road is definitely not safe and it's small technical coming into the very last part when you make the left turn for the breakaway riders to start climbing up 21 kilometers to the summit finish here at stage four of Tour Romandy. Behind, I'm getting a little worried when I'm sitting on a chest to fill because you know when it's all strung out, the group's about 70 riders strong. And when we look at the field, all strung out coming down, if you're 70th and right in that position back there and they're coming out of a left turn hard left turn after a hard narrow descent you know the guy in the back whoever's sitting back there last basically anyone from 30 guys back is going to be sprinting to start this final climb here on stage five the breakaway is blowing up all over the place when when the cameras come on i'm coming up the last and final climb joseph Cherney's one of the first riders to get dropped then that breakaway will end up with three riders in front chris yule jensen's there ben zwaya from bora hans grown larson craddock I don't know how he got up here because he was one of the first to be dropped when the climb started proper, but somehow Larson Craddock has found himself 
up there with his teammate Chris Jules Jensen and Ben Zwyaf as they're trying to hold off the peloton. Now, as I told you, Cherney got caught early, but let's go back to the final descent here on stage four as we see the peloton rounding this left turn just behind race leader Ayuso. There's a crash. It's Michael Woods, Israel Premier Tech. He's got the bike sliding all the way pitched off to the right. Then he's going to high side as the tires start catching some traction. It's going to flip him over. Michael Woods' day and his race here at Tour of Romandy will end on the beginning of the final last climb here at stage four. Michael Woods, no luck here coming into this final left turn, but Ayuso had marvelous luck because the race leader's yellow jersey was directly in front of Michael Woods. When he comes out of the turn, you see Ayuso there right next to the right side curb. Once he makes that turn finally proper, he's going to look back over his shoulder and you know what's going on right now in Ayuso's mind. Whew! Man, was that close. Michael Woods almost took me down. Now up front, FDJ had two riders on the front. They could have been drilling at full gas right at the start here with 21 kilometers to go. But when you see the FDJ rider up front, he's looking back over his shoulder because he's trying to find Thibaut Pino. And that means that they're going to have to let off the gas just a little bit, which means those riders caught behind the crash. Not by much of a split there from Michael Woods. I only saw one, two riders get pushed off to the right and miss that left turn there but that'll allow the riders in the back as the speed eases up from FDJ not pulling not attacking right away at the beginning of this climb once they ease the gas up that allows Aruso a little bit easier way of getting his him up to the front along with the other AG2R riders now up front, as I told you, there was three riders from the original breakaway of five that started this last and final climb here on stage four. They're still drilling it as hard as they can. And then all of a sudden, when we look back, we see it's UAE Team Emirates back there. They're drilling it. Dominique Novak's on the front. When you look at the head there, though, of race leader Ayuso, it's always down. He's always got his helmet pointed down. This is usually the sign that a rider's suffering. And when you look at the size of the group and you see the riders in there, Remy Cavagna is still in this group. We got the sprinter there, Ethan Hader from Enos. He's still locked onto the back and in this group. So when you're looking at Ayuso's head there always put down, this is a bad sign right now for UAE Team Emirates. But they're still at the front. Got a solid crew up there with Dominique Novak leaving, leading the way. He'll pull up until about 13 kilometers to go. Dominique Novak will relinquish the lead, but it'll go to his teammate, Mikhail Björk. Now, Mikhail Björk, he's setting a fine tempo at the front, always bringing back time on the breakaway riders up there. As we saw, not only Joseph Cherney wrapped up, now we also saw Thomas DeHent, Lotto Destiny, wrap back up early in the beginning of this final climb. Bjerg's up there doing some fine work, like I said. Then all of a sudden, he has a mechanical. Look as he's having the mechanical coming off of the back of the group. Up front, Jaco Alula are taking over and starting to go full gas here on stage four. Now it's Chris Harper on the front. He's throwing down, but let's back the cameras up to look at Mikhail Bjerg. He's pulled over to the right side of the road, drops his bike, waiting for his mechanic. Did some adjusting to try to get his computer mount off the bike. Does, but his mechanic... Goes, lets the bike drops, gives him a big push, and Mikhail Bjerg's back on the road. He won't get back up to the front, though, so Ayuso's down one more climber with Mikhail Bjerg out, and they also lost Dominique Novak just before him. So UAE team members' numbers are starting to dwindle. Now as the peloton's coming up to the breakaway riders of three, they're getting all wrapped up. He's Jaco Alula on the front, pulling back to Jaco Alula riders in the break. Nothing wrong here. These guys were never going to make it. And Jaco Alula won Eddie Dunbar, giving him a shot at winning today's stage. Is it a tactic I would have done? Mm, I don't think I'm putting my team on the front for Eddie Dunbar. If we had Simon Yates still in the race, who dropped out after stage one, if we had him still in the race, this would be a fantastic tactic to do right here on the final climb here on stage four but with eddie dunbar man i'm sitting on the chesterfield thinking oh man jaco lula are going big here with chris harper now harper keeps pulling he's wrapped up the breakaway everything is for the stage win and the gc classification here on stage four with jaco lula still riding the front they're up there setting a fine tempo then we see harper pull over because dsm have now come to the front only is on the front. He is doing a fantastic job. And he's got Max Pooley 
that's sitting near his wheel, and he's got Roman Bardet in this front group. We look at the peloton now, it's starting to explode all over the place. We see the front group, about 11 guys. We look back, it's the race leader's yellow jersey that's coming off the back. Ayuso is not having a fantastic day four as the UAE Team Emirates Spanish riders coming off the back. Finn Fisher Black is there as the Super Domestique trying to get Ayuso back up to the front. But when we start seeing the cameras go forward, we'll see Aegon Bernal's come off the back of this group too. And he's trying to close the gap up to this front group of about a dirty dozen. And everybody's dirty because it's been rainy, slippery, nasty out on today's stage four as we see DSM drilling. Now, as DSM get a little bit further up the road, this is when we see Jaco Alula come back up to the front again with Filippo Zana in the Italian national jersey. I don't recall a time when I've seen Filippo Zana on the front of the peloton this late into a world tour race, but he's got to have the Italian national jersey for some reason, and now he's putting it on display here at Tour of Romany. As he's throwing down 100%, Eddie Dunbar's locked on this wheel. The group is getting down to a about 10 riders at this point in time as we see Gino Mater off the back. He's got Aegon Bernal with him as those guys are trying to close back up to this original group of 10, but Aegon Bernal just can't quite get up there. We look at the front. Now we start seeing some attacks with seven kilometers to go as it's Roman Bardet. Bardet is putting on a display, guys. Bardet's first attack is followed quickly by Adam Yates. His seventh, second attack right away after he was caught is then brought back by Jorgensen from Movistar, who is the GC race leader up here. If he can keep it all together, the American kid can win Tour of Romandy. Next up is going to be Simon Carr. Simon Carr's throwing in attacks with about six kilometers to go. Adam Yates is all over it. Jorgensen's directly on the wheel of Adam Yates. Then Simon Carr throws in another attack, and somehow Rafael Micah, who had come off on the earlier attacks and was chasing, has found his way back up to this elite group. Now the next big attack we're going to see coming at about five kilometers to go. Eddie Dunbarf, Jaco Alula is throwing in attack. Guys, I remember on stage one, the GC commentator Nico Roche, he had talked about how Eddie Dunbar was going to be their race leader for the Giro d'Italia. I thought, okay, the kid could possibly win a stage, maybe go top 15. But to go out and win the general classification at a Grand Tour, how do you make this young kid the race leader for the Giro d'Italia? Well, now he's trying to prove me wrong as he's throwing in attack. He only gets about 200 meters into his tack, though, and then we see Eddie Dunbar get on the radio. I don't know what you're talking about on the radio when you're two seconds in front of an elite group here at Tour of Romandy trying to win the final summit finish on stage four. But Eddie Dunbar needs to have a conversation in the car. Must have went with something like, I can't do it. But he eases up on the gas, goes back to the group. Now all of a sudden we'll see more attacks coming from Bardet. Bardet's blowing this group up. We look at the back. Caruso's back at the very back of the group. We see Thibaut Pino back there. Simon Carr's back there. We look at the front group. Adam Yates is pulling back. Roman Bardet, now he starts setting some hard tempo on the front with about 4.2 kilometers to go. All of a sudden, we see everything snap. Simon Yates starts going solo with over 4 kilometers to go here on stage 4 of Tour of Romandy. Behind the two groups come together. We had two two DSM riders, Max Pooley and Roman Bardet up there, and Jorgensen. Then behind we see Thibaut Pino there, Caruso from Bahrain Victorious done a great job of setting some tempo to try to bring it all back together. He rounds up the group to about seven, but when we look up front, Yates is still powering away. He looks back over his shoulder, sees he's still got a gap back there as Jorgensen's the rider that's trying to get everything under control back there. Now Yates, he's going solid on the pedals. We're getting under about 2.5 kilometers to go. Tebow Pino will throw in attack. Now Pino has been perfect to this moment, guys. Every time you watch Tebow Pino, he was sitting on the back of the group, never wasting energy. Let me remind you, he had his teammates riding from 50 kilometers to go when the cameras came on, and they might have been riding from kilometer zero. I don't know because I didn't watch it, but now I know Tebow Pino's throwing in attack. So the Frenchman has some form, and this is his last season here of racing in the professional peloton as he's going to retire after this year. He with his first attack, he got that 
that brought back. Then he throws in another tack, looks over his shoulder, sees he's got a gap and gets fully on the pedals. Starts bringing the time back to about six seconds on Adam Yates. We look at the picture there. It's Thibaut Pino. He's got Adam Yates in his sights. Now we go up further to Adam Yates and we see Adam Yates look over his shoulder. He realizes Thibaut Pino is coming, so he accelerates one more time on the pedals, gets that gap stretched out again to about eight, nine seconds on Thibaut Pino behind the chasers. Jorgensen's doing everything he can to win Tour of Romany, but just always giving up a few meat few meters with every pedal stroke as he can't bring back the front two riders up front. Now Yates goes under 1k to go, looks back over his shoulders a few more times, gets up to about 150 meters to go, looks back over his shoulder, zips up his jersey, and then gets ready to celebrate the victory here. Stage four of Tour of Romany and the race leader's yellow jersey. He'll wrap up second on the stage. It's Thibaut Pino from FDJ that across the line totally spent. Adam Yates was spent when he came across the line too. And then behind in the group, it's Caruso. He did just enough to come across the line for a podium position here. Matteo Jorgensen did enough to hold second on the general classification, but could not bring back time on Adam Yates, UAE Team Emirates. When it's all wrapped up, you see Adam Yates in the race leader's yellow jersey up on the podium celebrating in his post race interview he said he talked a bit with Ayuso at the beginning of the climb who said he wasn't feeling good so gave him the green light to try to win the stage and protect the race leader's yellow jersey at the end of stage four five days of racing the jersey has switched hands every single day here at Tour of Romany two days for Sudo Quick Step, one day for Ineos' Hater, and then of course Ayuso UAE Team Emirates yesterday in the individual time trial, and now Adam Yates today, who should be able to hold it going into tomorrow's fifth and final stage here of Tour of Romandy. But when we look at some of the other results and we look back, Aegon Bernal, the Enios rider, the Colombian rider who had a devastating accident last season and has just been creeping up on form came through solid guys he chased all the way from originally when DSM were splitting things up with the tax from Bardet and Simon Carr from EF Education Aegon Bernal was back there just going through the damage the carnage of riders coming out the group Aegon Bernal was just catching them working a bit with them and then dropping them and then coming to the finish here to finish top 10 on stage four about 55 seconds down but this is a good sign for the Colombian because he still got Plenty of time to find that last bit of fitness to get himself to the Tour de France for 2023 in good form. Have a lot of faith, fingers crossed, for Egon Bernal to leave here Tour of Romany in good fitness and then still have time to up that form in the next coming two months before Tour de France starts proper July 1st was a great day of racing, not for Ayuso, but he did say in his interview that he didn't have the legs. Every time he'd done an interview throughout the week here at Romandy, he'd always says, ah, something's not quite right. Yeah, I know I won. And personally up here on the butterfly effect, I thought he had Romandy wrapped up. That wasn't until you start seeing him going up the climb early in the pooling when the group was still large, talking 40, 50 riders, with still sprinters back there, still super domestiques back there. You see all the time that Arusso's head was always down and that's a sign that the Spanish rider was feeling bad throughout the beginning of this climb, not just when all the big hitters were attacking, but through the very beginning, you know Arusso was having a hard time here on stage four. Now on the butterfly effect right now, this is when I'd love to be able to get a little more in depth and pick up the telephone call or fly over and talk with UAE team Emirates Arusso and say, what happened? How were you eating through the week? What were you doing? How was it happening? Everybody says, including Arusso, he says his legs weren't just quite right, but I always remember when I was as young as Arusso, whenever you're riding, the form was always fluctuating from day to day, left and right. But we see with riders like Tade Pogacar, they can keep that level high. And what I always thought when I was a kid, it always seemed to be the more I think about it, maybe you didn't eat enough throughout the races. Maybe you did a little bit too much work in certain stages. But either way for Arusso, I found it difficult to see that he'd be in problems from the beginning of this climb when the group was still so large. And then, of course, coming really bad once we started seeing the attacks from the GC favorites. Jaco Alula's Eddie Dunbar went a little bit too aggressive, blew himself up, and then couldn't finish with that front group. But he did put in that attack with five kilometers to go until he got on the radio to tell his teammates, I can't do it! 
was a great day of racing though. Make sure you guys go back and watch at least the last 22 kilometers of today's race because you see the bad luck there from Michael Woods and then all the way up the final climb, it's just attacks nonstop. I mean, the brake was attacking, the field was attacking. It was an unbelievable race and I only covered about a fifth of the action on that final last climb of today's stage. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Tomorrow's the last stage of Tour Romedy. Then we get ready for the Giro d'Italia. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you real soon.